Now for the next session, we're listening to Marcus Koshani, um, APO, I think, on IRC. And yep. he's going to tell us about games in Debian. I know I'm looking forward to it. Marcus? <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Um, Benvindo, welcome. Um, my name is Marcus Koshani, and I'm a Debian developer from Germany, and also Debian user since 2002. Um, I'm a member of the games team, the Java team, and the LTS team. And um, I maintain or have touched around about 500 packages in Debian. I do mostly packaging work. So if you have questions about packaging or something like that, you can always ask me. Um, um, I, in 2012, I've created a small project called uh, linuxubert.de, which is a small virtual server uh, which runs multiple multiplayer games. So if you get bored during the talk, um, you can join the server. We have Open Arena, Mind Test, and even a poker server. Um, if you have any questions after the talk, you can contact me um, or the games team in general via IRC at Debian Games, or you can send us an email to debiandevilgames at lists.debian.org. Um, I will try to keep this talk a little bit shorter than usual. I will don't want to repeat everything I've said um, at the last DebConf, so that we have more time for questions later. I want to talk about the strengths of Debian games, um, where we are good, and how can we improve. I want to talk about the main contrib and non-free areas in Debian. Many people outside of Debian don't even know what that is, and they don't know why a certain game is in a certain area in Debian and why they can't find it. That's why I want to tell you how you can find games in Debian. And then I want to talk about new games since DebConf 18, what is new and what games are gone. And then let's take a look at the challenges for Debian 11 Bullseye. So um, you all know Debian main. Debian is um, consists of the main distribution, and in the main distribution we ship around 619 different games and emulators. And you also all know that all games are free software. But I can't stress it enough, not only the software or the code is free software, but also the artwork complies with the Debian free software guidelines. Not many people know that, and I believe we are the only distribution who makes a strict distinction between completely free games and um, other normal games that are, have a free engine but which does not ship any free assets like images or sounds. Um, most games are written in the C and C++ languages. We have also two Paul games, Frozen Bubbles and um, Pang Zero. We have one Haskell game, Raincat. We have three Java games, Freecall, Infinite Tux, not yet approved by the FTP team. Wink, wink. I hope so. And Robocode. We have also two dozen Python games and a dozen D games. Um, we are especially fond of the D games. Um, if you want to try them out, check out games, shoot them up. Um, they are very good in my opinion. And um, yeah, stylistic, very interesting. So, um, the issue with games is usually you play a game and then you deinstall it. So, you will never find a game that has a popcorn value of 10,000, 20,000, or even 100,000. So, if there's a game with 2,000 installations, this means it is already a very popular game, like Super Tux Card. Most of our games uh, have only 100, 200 installations. Um, we ship mostly PC games, but we have also some games which could run in a web browser, like Cave Express. But the problem at the moment is that um, mscripten is RC buggy, uh, which is needed to compile it to JavaScript. And as long as we can't fix mscripten, um, there won't be any web games. Yeah, pros, in my opinion. Um, definitely the excellent integration into Debian. Um, you probably know all the uh, container formats or the bundling, um, you know, formats like Flatpak or Snap. Um, you don't need that. 
we have perfect integration in Debian. You just install a game like every other piece of software. And this is very convenient for the user. And yeah, it, it gives you, um, it, it, makes, it makes it much more easy, in my opinion, uh, to find and install games. So you don't have to uh, handle uh, different formats or, uh, or try different um, uh, packaging methods. It's just pure old Debian. Um, we are good at preserving old games. We have very old games from the 90s, which can still run on modern PCs. Uh, it's just due to the access um, of code and artwork. Um, we can freely modify them, we can update them. That's a really great um, um, benefit. Um, in my opinion, we are very good at giving casual gamers a great choice of games. So we will never satisfy a hardcore gamer who wants to play uh, a commercial proprietary game. But uh, for the people who just want to relax, to enjoy, um, to try something different, um, they can choose between 600 different games. And we don't only have chess games or card games. We have um, strategy games or we have um, real-time strategy games and first-person shooters and so on. So maybe you get tired of them at some point, but you can always come back and install them again. And there's a great choice, much better than on some commercial operating systems. Um, you can also use them for creative learning. Um, most programmers start with a simple application like um, programming a calculator, but programming or creating a game is much more enjoyable. So it's not only about creating or writing the code, but you've also think about, yeah, your game. How is it played? How can it be played? Um, you have to create assets, images, um, sounds. It's a very complex task, but also very creative, in my opinion. And gaming or, or games in Debian offer non-developers um, non an opportunity to create content. So you don't have to write one single line of code, but if you are good at creating images or, writing, uh, or creating sounds, then you are very welcome. And all the codes and the artwork can be reused for other um, programs too. So this is, a great, um, this is really great because it is not just about the games. If you start another project, you can just use it. Uh, you can just, can just use the code or the artwork for that one. So a different question. When I started in 2002 um, with Debian, I had a hard time to find programs I liked or games I liked. Uh, at some point, somebody told me how to find them with uh, command line tools. So Geeks would probably try something like that. Um, this is one way because um, every game is in section games. If you find a game which is not in section games, then it's probably a bug. But this is an easy way to find games. But it's not the a way for everyone. So normal users would choose an application like Synaptic, GNOME Software, GNOME Games App, Plasma Discover, uh, KDE users, or Muon, which will give them uh, a graphical um, UI, and which makes it a bit easier for them. But then I thought, maybe there's another way to make finding games more easier. And then I created the Debian Games Plant in 2014, which is just um, a collection of meta packages. So you can find extensive information about the Debian Games Blend, or about uh, blends in general, at um, debian.org slash blends. And um, the Debian Games Blend itself consists of 34 meta packages. Um, and what you're usually doing is, so you want to install, or you want to, f to play um, chess games, so you would just install games chess. If you want to play card games, you would install games card. If you are a fan of Tetris, you would install games Tetris. And you get all the games, um, but they are only recommended. So if you get tired of one game, you can easily remove it from your um, PC again. And, um, but not the whole meta package um, gets removed. 
So every time I update the meta package, you get new games, but um, you don't have to worry about um, if, you, if you don't like one of them, you can just remove them and the meta package is still intact. Um, my goal was to increase the visibility um, of the games on Debian and to promote them. And I tried to create a super meta package, which I consider to be the best games in Debian. Uh, this was a very hard task because um, everyone has uh, yeah, different matter, uh, different, it's a matter of taste, it has a different opinion. And I thought about adding 10 games um, to this package. But I couldn't decide which one of them I like the most. So, yeah, I, I cho chose different, mm, different criteria. S popcorn value was important, of course, but also gameplay, uh, look and feel, aesthetics, and fun factor. Those are all, yeah, not hard factors, but I think I have found 100 games which are enjoyable for most people, and at least one game should be good or should be enjoyable for, for each um, of our users. <laughs> so, what has changed since DevConf 18? Um, first of all, the good news is we have introduced more games uh, in Buster than we have removed. We have also introduced um, more, yeah, let's say, complicated games, more games which are um, have a greater depth, uh, depth, and um, well, we have only removed small games like um, eBoard Extras Pack One, so extras or, or chess games, which were buggy or were unmaintained, uh, or holding nuts was a poker server which went offline. So, this was, it couldn't be avoided because upstream activity ceased uh, to exist. But mainly, we can say um, we have got much more packages, much more games into Debian uh, in the last two years than we have removed. So, um, what games do we have? Um, we have Pekka Kana 2, which is a Super Mario-like game, or Infinite Talks, Infinite Talks, which is also a Super Mario game, but written in Java. I will tell you more about them in a few minutes. NAV is a very, very interesting game. If you like um, space exploring and 2D strategy games, yeah, well then, you should take a look at NAV. Um, Jerry was a chess GUE. Lix is a Demings clone, also very interesting. And um, Galois and Re Tetris are Tetris like games. Uh, I would also like to point out Gigalomania, which is a strategy game, um, which is also quite complex. And yeah, well, just take a look. So, and all these words are quite boring. So, I have made some screenshots to show you some games, just um, to tell you something about Knife. Like I said, Knife is a 2D game. Um, you are exploring the galaxy, which is basically mm, limitless. And there are certain missions, but you can also just go from planet to planet, trade something, and of course, you can also attack enemy ships. Um, the, the next game is Pekka Kana 2, where you play a rooster. This is some of these old, um, old, uh, old style games with cartoon like graphics. If you have played Super Tux before, then you will find the general um, gameplay very similar. Very, you will be very familiar with it. A very fun game. Uh, it was only under, introduced to Debian a few months ago because the Finnish creator of the game uh, decided to uh, relicense it. So he um, licensed it under, under a BSD license. And this is an, actually a 15 year old game. Uh, commercial game, and we now have, yeah, it's yours. Ah, <laughs> yeah, he's the maintainer, I remember. <laughs> so this is this one is really great. I like it. A um, third game is Infinite Tux. It is unfortunately not. Is that not? It has not been accepted yet. It is about, uh, well, another Mario-style game. 
and you will notice the graphics. They look a bit, mm, well, not very polished. Um, but you have to remember that the creator of the original game engine, that was Markus Persson, and he's also known for creating Minecraft. He's a Java developer, and he has proven once again that you can develop games in, with Java. Um, this game does not depend on any third libraries, which is very interesting for Java developers. But the problem, problematic part was um, he used the commercial, non-distributable assets from Nintendo uh, to run the game. Of course, we can't distribute them, so the maintainer of this game uh, replaced all assets, all images, with freely available images from uh, different websites. And yeah, it works perfectly, in my opinion. Of course, you can um, replace, improve some of the graphics, but the most important thing is we have now an engine which does not have to be in Contrib, but can be used in Debian main. Now let's talk about Contrib. So you've heard a lot about Debian main. Um, we have some engines in Debian Contrib and uh, other games which we cannot um, ship in Debian main because um, we have no, yeah, well, no images, no free art is available for them. We usually say if free art exists, either in Debian or somewhere else, then it can go to main. But in this case, there's no free art available, so it has to stay in Contrib. All those games or all those engines are free software. And um, for me, Contrib is a staging area. So in the best, if we are lucky, we find some maintainer like the maintainer of Infinite Hooks, and he replaces all the uh, non-free stuff, and but that is kind of rare. I'm very happy this this has happened, but it's kind of rare. So I consider Debian Contrib um, to be a staging area, and um, all those engines are free software, but yeah, there's no uh, free art available at the moment. And then we have Debian non-free. Um, Debian non-free, um, in Debian non-free we ship mostly um, non-free art packages. So I can't remember well, I remember only one game, which is Sangband, which is non-free. This is only because the original author does not allow selling the game, which makes it non-free for Debian. Um, but if you, uh, if you compare that with Angband, Angband is, der is derived from the same code. This is free software because someone convinced the original author to relicense Angband. Yeah, well, now it is in main. So Obviously, the Sangband um, upstream maintainers uh, did not, uh, did not uh, try to contact the author. And that's why um, yeah, well, the old license is still in place. Uh, the minimum requirement um, is that the game must be distributable, or the packages must be distributable. Um, like I said, most, most of our packages in non-free are data packages, like the one for um, Sauerbraten for example. And the most popular non-free game package is Steam. It's no surprise, I think. So for those people who want to play commercial games and proper propriety games, um, they would install Steam. And um, Steam itself, um, or there's, there's another operating system called SteamOS, which is based on Debian. And, well, a lot of... Um, yeah, a lot of people choose um, to play on SteamOS because yeah, they can, um, they can, uh, they have, can play nat uh, Linux games natively and also their favorite games on this platform. But it is also possible on Debian, of course. There's no big difference. Um, then there's another category, uh, which are non-distributable games. And so sometimes you have an engine, a free engine, and you want to play some of your favorite game, which runs on this engine but it is completely non-distributable. The license does not allow it. So we have a tool called Game Data Packager, uh, which you can install from uh, Contrib. And it will package the application or the artwork into a Debian package. Just when you type Game Data Packager, mm -hmm, command uh, the name of the game, uh, it will do so automatically. It checks, there's a checksum and it checks 
whether um, all the files are, are valid and the real deal. And then you get an, um, a normal Debian package. So, challenges for Debian 11. Um, like with every other uh, release cycle, there are GCC 9, GCC 10, GCC 11, GCC 12, I don't know, um, transitions. And because we have a lot of C and C++ packages, we are affected by them. Um, mostly, a 20-year-old game starts to fail um, to build from source. And then we need someone who can fix the code. Um, for GCC 9, I've counted five packages which are affected. I expect similar, uh, similar values, similar numbers for 10, 11, and so on. This is one of our usual, but this is what we are usually doing to maintain packages, just fixing build failures. But the most important aspect um, in Debian 11 will be the Python 2 removal. I'm not yet sure if this will happen at all, but we will definitely try it. But nevertheless, we have to port all our Python games, which are based on Python Pi game, to Python 3. And we have, there are not a lot of people who, um, who port games to, to, another, to another language. Um, and all upstreams, as far as I know, are very inactive. So they have developed the game 10 or 15 years ago. And of course, they don't, they no longer care about it. So we definitely uh, need some people who want to port Python 2 games to Python 3. And then, what I said before, our main task is maintaining the status quo. quo. Um, it sounds boring, but we all would be very happy to, to keep the current level um, of game support in Debian. 619 games, that's not a small number, I, I think for just uh, free software games, but we need more people who are interested in boring tasks like packaging new upstream releases, fixing some bugs, and yeah, talking to our users when they file bug reports. This is also important, so take them seriously and reply to them and try to figure out where's the problem, can we fix it, can we forward it to the um, upstream maintainers, etc. Yeah, on attract more contributors, uh, this is a general task for all teams in Debian. Uh, most of our team members are 30, in their 30s or even 40s now. Where are the people who are 20? <laughs> so we need more younger people who are interested in keeping all this game stuff alive. I don't know where to find them. Um, sometimes we are lucky and um, uh, someone um, resp replies to a release critical bug and even fixes them. I want to mention uh, Yavor Doganov here especially because um, he ported a few of our um, GNOME 2 games to GNOME uh, GT GTK 3. And uh, it was not an easy task. It was not trivial, trivial. And I'm very glad that such people exist. Um, yeah. So this concludes already my talk. And now we have a lot of time for questions. If you have any questions, I can answer them, I hope. So that's it for now. Thank you. So for questions, there's a standing mic. Hey, Markus, thanks for your talk. Um, I like it a lot, your work for the Debian, Debian Games team, because it's uh, also a blend which is using everything what, what uh, we invented in other blends. And um, what I uh, would recommend to get new people, because we are too old. We are, I'm <laughs> grandfather, right? We are too yeah. old. In my team, we are, uh, uh, I'm offering some kind of mentoring program. It's called Mentoring of the Months, where you can as a newcomer, pick some program which is not packaged, package it, and I help you for mon one month to include you in the team. It works quite good. And so my offer is, because my, I have the restriction, it should be from biology for, for our project from Debian Made. I, my offer is today, if you want to package a game, I'm 
for you there for one month to put it into Debian games and I would take over the, offer, uh, the, the mentoring. Not the packaging, because I'm too old, but the mentoring. <laughs> okay, if there are, are volunteers, come to me. My name is Andreas Tiller and I would help you. Thank you. There's a question from IRC. Yes. I just want to say you're never too old for games. What is this? <laughs> uh. um, uh, um, hang on. Right. Uh, he's saying, at the moment, the various game packages do not provide consistent menu, at least in KDE. Mm -hmm. This can be seen when installing many or all of them on a machine. Then several of the games do not end up in the appropriate games submenu. Are there any work going on to make the game's menu more consistent by updating their .desktop files in concert? Yes, um, it's a bit difficult because it depends on your um, desktop environment. Um, so that games can show up in your menu, um, we have to install so-called desktop files. You install them into user share applications usually. And you have to set the correct category for the game. So if the maintainer um, made a mistake, maybe it put it in the wrong category, it will not show up where you will expect the game. And then there's another problem. Uh, in KDE, um, there's, there are certain categories for, for desktop files which are mandatory, but others are optional. And I believe KDE treats some of these categories differently than uh, GNOME. So, um, well, some, sometimes those games will not show up. If you find such games, please file a bug report. I guess we can, we can change the desktop file and make it visible again. This is a very important task in my opinion. I have talked about it before. Uh, we, we should put more effort into creating good icons in Debian. It's not only for games, but for all programs. So the first thing a user sees is the icon. And we have still some very low resolution icons. They are a bit blurry. And we should invest more time to make them look good. We should also invest more time into desktop integration. So if you package, if you have an application, if you have a game, it should ship a, a desktop file. It's very important. And there's another ongoing effort. It's called AppStream. Um, AppStream metadata. This is an additional format which we could use uh, cross-distribution-wise. So sometimes you can just copy, steal um, the, the AppStream data file from another distribution and um, use it for your package. It's very important. It makes uh, desktop integration much better and much, um, yeah, much more visible for the user. So we should invest time there, definitely. Please file bugs. <laughs> Can I ask another one via IRC? Sure. Um, is GoPlay using the dev tag still wanted by the games team? If not, is there some better GUI alternative to locate and install games? Uh, which, which was Gobbler? Uh, is GoPlay using the dev tag? So that's that one. Uh, is GoPlay using the dev tag? We can ask him to clarify. Yeah. Um, I must admit, I believe um, we don't maintain GoPlay really well. Um, so is there a good GUI alternative to locate and install games? I guess that links to your previous question. Yes, um, so DebTex was a good idea. Um, so DebTex is basically you, uh, you tag your application, your game with um, different keywords like uses joystick or uses SDL or, uh, written in Java language and so on. Um, but we have mm, not, um, yeah, we, we, we haven't tried to follow this path. Um, I think it is nowadays better to either use the Debian Games Blend, so you just install a meter package if you want to find a group, a type of games you like. And if you want to find a single game, then it is usually better to use a graphical and, um, user interface um, like the ones I mentioned, so GNOME Games App or Synaptic, this is far more easier than uh, for, for users. You get, you get a nice icon, you get an explaining te text description. Um, 
I don't believe GoPlay um, will be will provide the same quality of information. Um, a quick question: Do all the games have images on screenshots.debian.net? Most of them, only if they are free software and in the main distribution, um, because of uh, yeah, licensing, we can't um, make screenshots of non-free games but most of them should have screenshots. If they don't have screenshots, you can make them yourself and um, upload them to screenshots.debian.org. There's usually someone who accepts them, if they are good. Another one? <laughs> Is there any hope to get OO Light back? Yeah, good question. I like this game a lot. It's a um, yeah, clone, clone of Elite. Um, the problem was that I believe AppStream incorporated some library, which is also in Debian, but um, which we couldn't replace with, with the system library. And there was a lot of work which, which the maintainer had to do. And yeah, well, he decided it was not feasible. So if there's another person who is capable of, of solving this problem, removing or supporting, maintaining this library, then we could bring it back. Yeah, it depends. Someone must do the work. One more question about IRC. Um, discovery of not installed games categories, specifically multiplayer information like standalone servers, does it require an exact version match for playing with Ubuntu LTS users, etc.? Um, most of all multiplayer games can be played with multiple versions. So you have, if you have an older version, you can uh, join a newer server, it really depends on the game. For example, uh, T -Worlds, the T Worlds um, server broke with the latest update to 1.7. If you have an older version, you can't connect to the newer version. There were also some problems with uh, FreeSIF servers. So if every time we ship a new major version, like from 2.5 to 2.6, then you can't connect with um, older clients. What I usually do is, if the game is important and it's a big game and fun game and users request it, I backport um, the newer version to, to stable. And that solves the problem for most of them. So you should always look, is there a backport and is there no backport? Just request it. Any more questions? Okay. All right, then there's a real life Tetris game going on outside. We're having our photo taken um, in between the auditorium and the MIDI auditorium. Um, it is an experience. You have to stand very still with your eyes open for a really long time, usually. Um, but it's happening after this talk, so please all go there. And thank you very much. Thank you all. Talk.